the perfect dividend portfolio. That's what we're building with this series, and I'm highlighting five dividend ETFs that could alone be your entire portfolio. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the last in our perfect dividend portfolio series. We've already covered some of the most popular dividend strategies from total return to dividend growth and safety, revealing the best dividend stocks for your portfolio. Today, I'm wrapping it up with five dividend funds yielding from 5% all the way up to 17% to add to your stocks or just create an entire portfolio of ETFs. We're getting started here with the Aberdeen All Commodity Strategy ETF, ticker BCD, but stick around and I'll show you why every investor needs at least one of these funds. Now, commodity funds aren't as popular as the other ETFs we'll look at later, but can still be a critical part of your portfolio. They work as a great inflation hedge, produce a good dividend yield, and will lower your risk a little when combined with stocks. The BCD invests in futures contracts across the commodity markets, including gold, oil, natural gas, metals, and agricultural products. It's heavily weighted in gold and energy products, with 16% of the fund in gold and 22% across oil and natural gas contracts, but that's just because those are the largest parts of that futures market. But what's really important here is how the fund tends to do with those other assets, like stocks and bonds. This correlation matrix shows how closely the commodity fund follows stocks in the S&P 500 index or bonds in the Barclays US Aggregate Bond Index. A correlation of just 0.27 and 0.07 is very low. In fact, it shows that the movement in stocks or bonds really has no effect on commodities at all. And I know that's getting way technical, but just means that when stocks or bonds crash, you don't have to worry about them taking your commodity fund down as well. And that's gonna give you some safety along with that 5.8% dividend yield. We're just getting started, but I wanna give you a checklist to follow if you're looking for your own dividend ETFs, how to be a better investor and find these on your own. I first looked for ETFs with a dividend yield above 3% because less than that and it's not really much of a dividend if you ask me. I also looked for the lowest possible expense ratio in that group of funds. And that is really important here because I see too many investors chase those higher dividend yield ETFs while totally ignoring the management fees. For example, a lot of investors might be attracted to the Invesco Yield Commodity Strategy ETF, ticker PDBC, for its 14% yield versus just 5.8% for the Aberdeen Fund, totally forgiving the fact that management is charging them double that expense fee just to hold the fund. And now that would be all right if management at these higher expense funds could justify it with that long-term outperformance, but they so often cannot. A five-year chart of the two funds shows the Aberdeen Fund has outperformed by 44%, totally wiping out the extra dividend in that Invesco fund. Now, that's not to say that all ETFs with those higher expense ratios are bad, but more often than not, there is another ETF within that same investing strategy that is going to cost you a lot less to hold. Beyond just a good dividend return, I'm also looking for overall stock return, but with a little leniency here. I don't want to sacrifice my portfolio value or stock price just to collect that higher dividend, but there are some exceptions. And that BCD commodity fund is a good example again. Since it's a commodity-focused fund, the price is going to follow commodity prices up or down. The share price doubled in the commodities boom during the pandemic, but has fallen along with those prices. So I just also want to compare the price performance against other funds with that similar strategy. If an ETF that checks all the other boxes like good dividend, low expenses, and volatility, then I might give it a pass on price performance if it's at least kept up with those similar funds. And that low volatility is another important factor. One of the advantages of owning ETFs, these exchange-traded funds, is that you don't get that roller coaster stress you get from individual stocks. An ETF might own hundreds or even thousands of investments, so any big sell-off in a few stocks is usually balanced out by some winners. I want to take advantage of that, amplify it by choosing those ETFs with lower volatility. Now, this is a measure of a stock or a fund's volatility in comparison with the S&P 500 market index. Now, beta above one means the stock is more volatile. Its price tends to jump up or down more than the market, while, while a beta of less than one means the stock is going to be less volatile. As an example, you can see that even though the JP Morgan Premium Equity ETF, the ticker JEPI, holds only stocks and actually very similar holdings compared to the S&P 500, that its beta is well below one at just 0.62. So even though this fund holds mostly the same stocks as in that market index, 
the managers are able to produce that higher dividend yield and stable stock prices. Finally, and this is gonna be the most important factor of all, exposure to different assets. Now that might sound a little confusing, that, that exposure to different assets like commodities, alternative assets, or just different asset strategies would be more important than dividend yield, but hear me out on this one. Whereas in our other perfect dividend portfolio series, whether it was the best dividend growth stocks or highest total return, we could point to maybe one or two stocks and say, hey, those are the best in this theme. This stock or, or that one has the best dividend growth or the highest return. But with ETFs, more than just any specific theme, it's more about what you need to fill the gaps in your portfolio. Within these five dividend funds, I'm gonna show you ETFs with exposure to commodities, to high yield bonds, stocks, and one for a totally new asset class, but I can't tell you which one is best. And that's gonna depend on what else you have in your portfolio and which fund brings something different to it. It's in that idea that you're gonna get the most from this dividend ETF because not only is it gonna give you that great dividend yield and returns, but you'll get a fund that kind of smooths out the risks in the rest of your portfolio. The Fallen Angel High Yield Bond ETF, ticker ANGL, is one of my favorite bond funds for its strong 4.9% yield and higher returns. The fund invests in bonds that were issued with an investment grade rating, so a strong financial rating, but have then been downgraded into high yield. This is usually on like slightly weakening financials or if, if the company adds more debt to its balance sheet, but 93% of the bonds in this fund are in those first two risk ratings, just below investment grade, so still fairly safe investments. What happens though is when these fallen angels get downgraded, the price of the bond comes down, but it's still paying that same coupon amount, so the interest rate goes up as well. Since they're still solid companies, the default rate is low and this group of bonds has outperformed the broader high yield index in 11 of the last 15 years. The fund pays a monthly dividend and is held up in times of stock market stress, which is exactly what you want in a bond fund. The expense ratio is just 0.35% and these are bonds of good sized companies like Las Vegas Sands, Newell Brands, and First Energy. Almost three quarters of the fund is in bonds of US companies with the rest in developed nations. So you get some of that in international diversification, which is something most investors need anyway. And it's also well diversified across sectors as well with bonds from companies across every sector of the economy, though it is more heavily invested in consumer discretionary, energy, tech, and financials. And there are a lot of bond funds and different strategies, but I like the Fallen Angels for a higher yield and return. We see here in a year-to-date chart of the ANGL in green with its 1.8% return, beating both the Vanguard Total Bond ETF, that's ticker B&D in red here, and the iShares Investment Grade Corporate Bonds, ticker LQD in purple. Now that total bond market fund holds the entire bond market, including safer treasuries. It's gonna be a little less risky here, but you pay for it in that lower return and just a 2.7% dividend yield. That investment grade corporate bond fund produces a nice return with that focus on corporate bonds and a little less risk than the fallen angels, but still a relatively low 3.6% yield. We'll get right back to that dividend ETF list, but if you haven't gotten your free quick start guide to making your investing plan, click through the link I'll leave in the description below. Nation, I see too many investors jump right into picking stocks. They end up losing their hard earned money, getting frustrated and stop investing. And it's all because they didn't have a customized plan and the goals that are gonna motivate them to keep going. It's why I created this quick three-step guide to making your plan. Within five minutes, you'll have an investing plan that makes your goals your motivation to keep investing and all customized to your needs. It's totally free and one of the three quick start guides I've created and a link to in the description. Check those out. Folks, I know sometimes investing can seem overwhelming, so I wanna show you how to get started as quickly and as easily as possible. I know you can do this and I wanna help you be successful. I've covered the JP Morgan Equity Income ETF, the JEPI a few times on the channel, especially versus some of those popular income funds like the QILD. This is easily my favorite among those covered call strategy ETFs, though I also like the XYLD as well. The portfolio managers have over 60 years experience in equities and derivatives, and it shows in this fund's performance. The fund invests in defensive, large cap stocks like insurers, consumer staples, and pharmaceuticals. You see here, it's all those bellwether stocks like AbbVie, Coca-Cola, and United Health. That gives it safety when the market tumbles. And then the portfolio managers sell call options on the S&P 500, that broad stock market index, to generate the cash flow for its monthly dividends. And that strategy has worked very well. You can see here in a chart of the price returns on the JEPI versus some of those popular covered call funds, including the QYLD, the NUSI, and the XYLD. 
the JEPI has lost just 0.88% over the last two years versus losses of 30 and 33% in the NUSI and the XYLD even a loss of 15% in my other preferred one here, the XYLD. Now, the JEPI is a monthly dividend fund, though since it makes those payments through a covered call strategy, it's not gonna be as consistent as regular dividend stocks. You see here in its dividends paid, it's a regular monthly payment, but no consistency in that amount with payments ranging from 36 cents to, to over 60 cents per share. It just depends on how much premium the manager is able to get from those call options each month. It is high yield though at 11% and the covered call strategy not only provides that income, but some safety in a stock market crash. We're coming up on one of the highest dividend ETFs next, but whatever your situation or your investing needs are, every investor needs at least one of these dividend ETFs. That's because folks, I guarantee you there is a gap in your portfolio. It's usually multiple gaps, but there is at least one gap in every investor's portfolio that can be filled by one of these dividend funds. Whether it's no exposure to bonds or commodities or, or just a specific asset class like with most portfolios, most investors, you're sitting there with all stocks in your portfolio and with some, it's all tech stocks or stocks from just a few sectors. So you're setting yourself up for just a massive crash and you don't even know it. Nation, I know, when all your stocks are going up, it feels like you're a genius stock picker. You're making hand over fist and can do no wrong, but it can also happen the other way as well. If all your money is in stocks, or even worse, if it's all in just tech stocks or concentrated in just one or a few sectors, there will come a day when everything is going down and you just feel like shit. Now, avoiding those days and getting your portfolio to go up smoothly, consistently over time is about filling those gaps and having some exposure to these other asset classes or, or just diversified exposure across stocks. That's what these dividend ETFs will do. They're gonna spread some of your money across all these stocks or, or different sectors or bonds or commodities and are gonna smooth out that roller coaster ride that is the stock market. That is why every investor needs at least one dividend ETF. The Simplify Volatility Premium ETF, ticker SVOL, is a newer fund but becoming very popular on its 17% dividend yield. And now while I don't think it's gonna pay that high of a yield forever, it should continue to produce a strong double digit dividend and I really like this one as a completely different asset class. A volatility is just how much the market or a stock moves up or down in a given period, a gauge of stock market craziness. And the volatility index, or the VIX, is the market's expectation for volatility over the next month. So how crazy investors believe stock prices will be over the next month. And while you can't invest directly in that volatility index, you can invest indirectly through futures, options, and ETFs, betting whether actual volatility will be higher or lower than expected. But then the SVOL isn't really making a directional bet here. It's simply saying that market expectations for volatility are typically higher than actual. Shorting those expectations then, so selling futures contracts against the VIX, is a way to capture that fear premium in the market. And that strategy is backed up by research, testing VIX futures shorting from 2005 through 2015 rolling those short contracts over each month was profitable in eight of the 11 years during the period with an average monthly return of 0.7% and a total return of 118%. The VIX has had a historically negative correlation with stocks. When stocks go up, the VIX tends to go down and vice versa. And the correlation here is negative 0.84, which is very strong and just means using this volatility strategy along with your stock portfolio can be a great way to reduce risk. And that's the point. I love that this is an opportunity in a totally different asset class. There are plenty of stock dividend funds and those covered call ETFs basically kind of doing the same thing. An investment in one is the same as any other and they're all gonna go in that same direction along with the market. But here with the volatility ETF, you have the opportunity to spread your risk out into that other asset that shouldn't move on a one-to-one -one with stocks and get that high dividend yield while all the while, while minimizing your risk. And here, ironically, my favorite dividend ETF, the Schwab US Dividend Equity Fund, ticker SCHD, doesn't look that great compared to this list of funds. The ETF only produces a 3.8% dividend yield. It's stock, so it's not gonna diversify your portfolio as much as some of these other asset ETFs, but there is still a lot to like about this fund. The Schwab ETF holds shares in 100 of the highest dividend payers within that large cap US market, and includes a lot of those faster growth tech sectors as well. Tech makes up 20% of the fund, giving it that return plus the dividend yield. And the fund is covering all its bases here with Coke and Pepsi, but 
Also some dividend stocks that you might not see in those other funds like Cisco Systems and Broadcom. It's less volatile than the overall market with a beta of just 0.81 and also one of the lowest expense ratios you'll find at just 0.06%. That's a management fee of just $0.60 cents for every $1,000 invested in the fund. It's produced a 10.5% annualized return over the last five years, slightly above the S&P 500, but pays a yield more than three times the market average. So while this one might not offer the highest dividend yield or exposure to different assets, the Schwab Dividend ETF is just a solid stock fund that you'll never have to worry about. It's going to give you those market returns plus the dividend with less volatility than most. Use the link below to get your free customized investing plan or click on the video to the right for the safest dividend stocks out there. Five dividend payers that will never let you down. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.